All right, boys, we're back. Let's get ready for part two. Today, we're going to go over the second part of Early Age Marverni, Boar Spawn Rates, Some Bad Luck, A Communion Setup for Gifts from Heaven, Stellar Cascades, Another Good Communion, and we're going to look over a few exact scenarios, try to give you guys some examples. Let's dive in and see how it goes. Hey, guys, I did a little testing on Marverni's Boar Generation, which, if you remember, for those of us that aren't super familiar with this stuff, you can get boars through the Boar of Carnutes here, which generates boars per turn, or you can summon them through the sounder of boars if you need them in an early war. But the boar of Carnute seems to be the genuine go-to. And when you get this, it is dominion dependent how many boars you get. Now, I did a whole bunch of testing on this. And the amount of boars that the boar of Carnutes starts with is random. And the amount of boars it generates per turn is also random. So what I did was I set up 10 of the commander boars in different types of dominions. And I did dominion 10, I did dominion 7, I did dominion 5, and I did dominion 2. And what I found is that in all of the Dominions, Dominion 1 all the way up to 10, you can have random amounts that you start with from 1 to 5. You can sometimes start with a commander that has 5 boars already with them, or you can start with a commander that has 1 board. I don't know if it's completely random, but it seemed like it was completely random because I went in sometimes in a Dominion's 10 province and got 5, while in Dominion's 2 province I'd get 1. So it seems like the starting boars are completely random. It just seemed to edge a little more towards the high end. But what I found with testing was really kind of disappointing. If you have a dominion of two or lower, presumably, you only get one boar per turn, no matter what, from each one of your commander boars. No matter what, you just get one boar per turn. I kept testing this one for like 50 turns just to make sure as long as your dominion doesn't go up, it just stays at one boar per turn. However, once you get all the way up to like dominion five, you get two boars per turn on average per Carnute. Then when you get up to dominion seven, it gets up to 2.6 boars per turn per boar. And then when you get up to dominion 10, you only get 2.8 boars per turn per boar. So my takeaway from that is as long as your Dominion's at least five, you're getting double what you get at Dominion's two. Now, if you go, if you're willing to go all the way up to Dominion seven and why not with your cheap 300 gold temples, you're going to get, you know, a half a boar per turn. So an extra boar every two turns extra, but it's not really that worth it until late game. That's something you could easily push for. So a lower Dominion starting score like five is definitely very viable. And I think it's a great place for you to save pretender points because you can make up so easily for it with 300 gold temples temples all over the place, especially now that temples are so much more expensive for so many nations. So remember, Dominion 10, 2.8 boars per turn. Dominion 7, 2.6 boars per turn. Dominions 5, 2.0 boars per turn. Dominions 2 is when you get down to one boar per turn. So I recommend Dominion score of at least 5 to maximize those boar spawn. Hey guys, I'm just sneaking this in here because it just happened on one of my playthroughs. I wanted to show you that people that do videos do get screwed just as badly as you do. And I'm going to show you an example with a random playthrough of Marverni. I got this wicked stalker in a random event, ethereal, super good stats, overall poison dagger, short sword. I got an assassination attempt on a basic commander, no items asleep. And I'm just going to show you what the roles decided happens in this combat. Now. Let's go over the rolls during this uh, fun combat. So you can see when I hit him when he was asleep, it's still a good roll. The defense roll of four with zero defense. Got a good attack roll, only did two points of damage. He got a decent protection roll going and apparently it was enough to reject most of the damage. That's fine. Then I missed. He tried to repel. He failed. I just rolled against an insanely high defense roll for a basic commander. Then he missed me. Then I hit him in the shield and the leg with a short sword. Rolled the perfect attack roll versus like the exact that I needed to beat his, again, insane defense roll. Damage roll rolled pretty decent against an insane protection roll. Do zero points of damage. Hit him in the head for zero points of damage. Repel value versus defense. He didn't repel. Attack roll to beat another really high defense roll damage roll versus a i would say good protection roll of the commander he missed me because he should all the time with my ethereal stalker missed commander attack roll 15 versus a defense roll of 21 keep in mind this commander has not rolled below 20 for defense the entire battle except for when he was asleep so far right so defense roll of 21 again i hit him in the body with a poison dagger for nine points of damage target was killed however check this out repel value of 20 versus my defense value of only 18 morale negated repel so i take one point of damage that isn't even listed here, right? Negated repel, morale roll 28 versus repel roll of 18. Attacker damaged by repel despite the eth roll and everything else. Attack roll 13 versus defense roll 12. Hit the commander, killed the commander the first time he rolled a not so great defense and a not so great protection roll. And then take a wild guess what that one point of repel damage did. The greatest affliction to get as an assassin based on attack skill. So believe me guys, even though, you know, we all talk about how you get bad luck here, you get bad luck there. Believe me, it happens to everybody. We just don't ever talk about it because we're Sneaky boys.
All right, guys, I also wanted to give you a quick, quick, quick rundown on how to spam gifts from heaven. So we came into, it's the same script I set for the communion for the Stellar Cascade span, except I've reversed it. Now our Elder Druids, the ones with higher earth, are going to be the ones spamming, and we're going to have our regular Sakanis as the slaves. So this will boost our guys a little bit, reduce the amount of fatigue they have on them, and I haven't scripted anything else. It's just running forward attack in another indie province. But I wanted to show you guys how effective gifts from heaven can be if you script it at least early so you'll see them hop into their communion there they go and then when you hear that horrible horrible sound that's gifts from heaven coming so here we go look at that wiping out entire squares and see i have one or two guys spamming Stellar Cascades because both work very well together. Stellar Cascades doesn't hit your own troops, but it slows them. That fatigue starts climbing on people and it'll slow them. And then when the meteors drop on them, it's game over. Now here's the downside coming up to gifts of, from heaven. I'm sure I hit my guys one or two times, but you can see it causes a lot more problems for the enemy than it does for you as long as you script it early in your script. And then I have them scripted towards the end to hop on Paralyze and Mind Burn Spam because that's high precision so we're not going to be killing ourselves with extra shots there at the end. But in big battles, big pitched battles, Gifts from Heaven spam is really, 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 really effective, especially against anything your boars can't trample. All right, guys, and here's a second example of the Gifts from Heaven spam. We're running against a bunch of giants. If you look at our battle here, we're facing a lot of giants that we won't be able to smash. We just have a bunch of these guys, noble warriors, running around. We don't have anybody scripted to cast Awakened Tattoos because we are against this. These 36 hit point monsters, spears, javelins, 15 protection, 14 defense. It's not going to end well for us. And they have a bunch of these Nephil giants with regen and I think blood bond. I don't remember. But I'm going to show you guys what a communion does. Now we're going to lose some druids because some of these druids are just sacrificing themselves for the communion. But you're going to see what's going on here. There we go. We have a basic communion set up. Not too great. We've got 14 communion slaves for a magic boost of three, just to make sure everybody... I set this up quick, but just to make sure everybody can spam the gifts from heaven. And we've got just a little batch of druids here and elder druids. And we've got a bunch of these goofy noble warriors, which are just regular and half of them are starving because of our boars. These guys are all divine blessing, regen. They're huge. So let's see what it looks like when we cast. Because remember, you want to cast the gifts from heaven early. That was our first volley. There goes our second volley. Our third volley. Oh! Alright. We got a morale route. Okay. Curse of Stones too, huh? Alright, so... I guarantee it stops spamming cursor or uh, gifts from heaven because some of our druids must have died of fatigue. Otherwise, they would have kept spamming. Yep. But at the low, low cost of 14 units, including eight regular druids, you kill 92 Gorohus girls and 13 Nephil giants, along with a Jotun hearse, mounted commander, and Nephil jarl. So, not a bad trick. Try it out, guys. All right, guys, running through the spells, I wanted to give you a quick example of Stellar Cascade spam, just so you can see how effective it is. I'm pretty sure this one probably went well. So, we only have, you know, eight, seven, seven, eight troops standing out here, just these goofballs. I don't have anybody buffing them or anything. But what we're up against is a whole bunch of heavy infantry, a bunch of heavy cavalry, a couple archers, you know, just a basic indie province because I didn't have anything better set up. But the trick is, what I took is all these Sakani, the guys that have only been used for fortune teller so far, fairly useless, but they can jump into a communion as a communion master, as sort of a reverse, like a turbo communion. So we have a druid jumping in the communion as a master just to get regeneration, and we have another one jumping in to get iron skin on our slaves. But we have four slaves here. We have the higher level elder druid, another foul spawn that was an elder druid. It doesn't really matter what they are. They just need to have at least as high astral as the spell being cast. So two. And these four up here are going to be communion slaves. And we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of these guys. The Sakani that otherwise seem kind of useless spamming their spell of stellar cascades, which let me remind you gives 25 fatigue damage. So let's see how it goes. Because this battle could get a little dicey if we didn't have them doing something useful. So there we go. Now they're all communion masters, so they get a magic boost of two. So each one of them is treated as astral three. We're not even doing more advanced scripting to buff anything, but watch this stellar cascade spam. Okay, there we go. 
Just a quick little spam. Let's check out the fatigue on these boys. Oh, 94. So now they're way more likely to get crit every time they're hit. 79, 152. This guy fell off his horse, I think. Yep, he fell off his horse because he got so tired, or the horse got so tired. This guy is alone, 84, so it broke up their formation. Let's see what happens when they get a little closer. And if we spam, we'll probably spam here next because they like, yep, there we go. Okay, so that was round two of spam. 71, 66, 68. They missed a couple guys, but a large amount of Stellar Cascade spam on these guys. These knights are already trash because of that. Now, our little buffs here have given our slaves regeneration, but look, they're only at 30 fatigue, right? We've given them shock resist, fire resist, cold resist. We have so many good buffs on these guys, but our mages only fatigue is at 20, 21, 14, 21. Our slaves are only at 36, 33, 31, and 30. They can keep this up for quite some time. And meanwhile, when everyone's unconscious, there we go. Oh, yeah. So now we're looking through there. 58, 64, 97, 154, 102, 192, 130, 154, 100. You can see how this can be extremely debilitating in early wars. Let's just see how much they spam this. Look at that. All right, now let's see. Now we're starting to mind burn, which is pretty easy because now we're all ethereal we have 24 fatigue 24 fatigue still only 24 on all of our masters our slaves are only getting up to 60 60 68 and 69 so we haven't even passed the 100 mark much less the 200 mark where we start getting thumped and we already have regeneration on our guys so that's a very simple setup i don't want to go too much into it but i wanted you guys to see how effective stellar cascade spam can be because it's a little disgusting. And then, of course, they'll start going off script and mind-burning people to death. Bloop! There you go. All right, boys. A brief run-through of Marverni expansion. Marverni expansion's fairly simple, even though Marverni's really bad early game. And the reason they're really bad is the obvious problems with their human troops and our scales. So, Sikwani, or Sikani, Gutwater, and Druids are kind of your primary first-year recruits. I would say. And if you need troop farriers, just use what you have. But you don't want to get into Elder Druids, in my opinion, until you have a couple more of these guys in other forts. But we're going to grab on our first turn as many Boar Warriors as we can, a Sakani, because that way it gives us that one extra holy to go with our Prophet. And then we're sending our Scout to attack here. Set our research to triple enchantment to get down to those Awakened Tattoos, because then your infantry become actually kind of unstoppable with the Quickness Bless. And then there are several ways you can go about this. You can either go Conjuration 5, to get pigs, the boars of Carnutes, to get that train rolling. Or what you can do is you can race for Mother Oak in alteration along with some other buffs. Now, the reason I like racing for Mother Oak and other buffs is because, first of all, the first one to get it up, it's very difficult to break it down by overcasting it. And secondly, because one of our major tricks on this nation to scale late are our iron pigs, which we're going to be doing once we have a bunch of the elder druids and similar things running around. But we can't possibly do iron pigs in the first year. So the way I've planned this out is I want to go for Mother Oak first. If I'm against a strong nature nation, if you're not against a strong nature nation, rush Conjuration 5 first to get your piggies coming and then go for Mother Oak. But the safer play, I think, just in case somebody else goes for it, is the Mother Oak play because it also gives you all of the buffs that you can use in your early wars. Now, if you're getting jumped really early, instead of going for those late game luxury things, instead rush Evocation 5 five rush stellar cascades this thing will stomp everybody for you if you spam it so emergencies like if you're against the hell bless abyssia go for an evocation rush if you're not against the hell bless abyssia and you're against a nation that's capable of mother oak rush alteration to get it first if you're not against either one of those things it seems like a pretty luxury game maybe really you know the players in the game are long-term thinkers or something rush conjuration five so you can get a couple pigs up just to give you a little bit of chaff to play with in the meantime that's what we're gonna do let's see what happens all right look Looks like we spotted heavy infantries, militias, and archers. We like that. Let's see how they're laid out. Oh, so even though none of you guys can do line formations, you're still in line formation. That's interesting how you cheat. The AI is always cheating. That's okay. It needs a little help. So we've got a bunch of heavy infantry down on the bottom side. We do not care about their damage of 13, 12. But what I think we want is I think we want to structure our boar warriors so they're on the top half and our javelin throwers are on the bottom half to hopefully do something good. All right, let's set this up with these guys up here. Boar warriors warriors in here get them somewhere back here hold the attack closest put us right here so that way we can at least take out four or five more of their troops before they attack us heavy infantries primarily malicious heavy infantries we like this our troops 
primarily do 23 damage, so they're really good against heavy infantries because they hit every time and they kill pretty frequently with that 10 damage bonus, or I guess plus 10 damage over their armor. Let's inspect a couple more of these places and make sure, like this one, is really only 30 heavy cav. Looks like it's mostly militias, but I want to make sure because that's a province we have to be careful with. Make sure we got the Sakani going. Get a couple more of these guys. The primary reason for the Sakani rush is because I want the misfortune to be countered in our home province because the last thing you need is a couple turns of unrest. You have to beat out. Our pretender researching for us is really accelerating. We're going to get enchantment to this turn, which is really helpful. So let's see how fast we can get it rolling. All right, let's check out Blue Moss Forest, see if we line this up correctly. There we go. Soften them up with the javelins and then come in with the quickened boar warriors just stomping everybody. Yep, we like that. Okay. Excellent. Absolute slaughter once they get in there. Did we lose any? No. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. We're okay losing a couple of these guys to attrition. Let's see what we got with our scout. Ooh, 12 heavy cab, 4 light cab they didn't mention. Let's see who these commanders are. We won't be able to compete with these for a while. That's okay. We got level 2 of our enchantment. Now we're going to start looking for another leader to lead these guys. We need somebody that can bless. And that's when you start calling out the druids. And then you'll put in the gutwaters so that you get a couple of them later. And specifically why we want one of each is the druids, the guy that's going to lead and bless. And the gutwater is going to be the the one that's going to be dropping their awakened tattoos on them once they get that. So now that we've got both holy guys recruiting, we know we're not going to be able to get five of these guys per turn anymore. So we drop it to four and then we grab as many of these Carnut Noble Warriors as we can. Now, if you can't fit a Carnut Noble Warrior in at that last one, you can grab two of these because that's just two extra axes chopping on people. That's my recommendation. You could also play around with the Pony Knights and having them attack rear, but I don't know how effective that would be since you'd be getting them in such small numbers. Let's check here to make sure how many heavy infantry we're facing because 50 is a whole heck of a lot. Elephants? Nope, we don't mess with those. Archers and light infantries? That's way too many troops. Let's see how many are actually there while we take this province out. But this could, see, this is where you have to be smart with expansion with Marverni, because they are terrible at expansion. So we need to figure out if taking this is worth it, but we can't until we see what's here. We might have to go here instead. Let's play it safe. Let's go here, play it safe, go for a few less provinces, and then just come back and see what we can get. All right, let's see how our battle went with our weak prophet army. See if we time it correctly again. We're not always going to have the luxury you what was that? Oh, misform with gems. Oh, the cloud mage, the random cloud mage dropping on us. That's always pleasant. Of course. Charged bodies, misform, air shield. Of course. You better run or we end up killing ourselves with charged body. Good. Again, we accept those. Let's see what this is. Ooh, light infantry. I could have sworn this was the province that supposedly had 130 of them. Mostly, oh, this one's an easy one. Okay. Not the easiest, but easy enough. Archery, the archers might cause us a problem, but we could also go for lion tribe. Let's see what we can do against a small amount of heavy infantry and then archers and all that. Let's see how we do with this. All right, guys, here we are. A little bit of risks taken last turn. Let's see what this is. Uh, oh, scouting. Heavy caps, way too many. Way too many. Where is that? Okay, yeah, can't be messing around there. Oh, we won. All right, let's see how well we won. Oh, here's our new little expansion army. Let's see if he's able to bless enough successfully. Ooh, he whiffed a couple of them in the front. Yep. Oh, wait, these are just the normal guys, and only he only missed one, I guess. One or two. Okay, that's fine. That's doable. Okay, excellent. Gorillion. This is our profit. Let's see if we're able to capitalize. See, the problem with Marverni expansion, at least set up like this, is that you need a critical mass of these boar warriors to guarantee low attrition. So, yep, see, so you end up taking attrition unless you have a critical mass of them to kill people fast enough that it doesn't matter. Hoburg militias? All right, well, I can handle that. Let's see how many we lost here. None? Good. Okay. Look for something easy. Militias, light infantry, archers. Gotcha. More of these guys in there so we have more durable fellows. And next turn, I believe, we will be getting enchantment three. Yep. So we'll be sending out a third expansion party with a Gatwater and a Druid, which slows our research, but that's primarily why we took our Pretender early, so he can keep us marching along that path, because Marverni is a human nation, and thus we need to be really far ahead on research to succeed. Let's check out what happens. All right, let's see. We got enchantment three, which gives us our tattoos, and now we can see what what happens in our first battle. We shouldn't have any problems here. We still have a couple. Oh yeah, Hoburg militia. I don't even really need to watch this. We're going to slaughter through these guys. Yep. I don't even think we'd lose anybody there, would we? Nope. All right, Golan Fens. This one's a little riskier, but not much. We took fairly easy battles. 
cool. Yep, look good. All right, let's get to our profit. See, oh, he's only got two left, even though he didn't lose any. Do we have any retreats or something? I guess he just, one just left. He's like, nah, I'm retired. See you later. All right, well, no reason to kill our profit for no reason. In a multiplayer game, I'd probably start producing temples randomly, like right here for sure, and then put a castle there. Let's see what we can do with this guy. Heavy infantry and heavy cab? Nope. Mm, too high of a likelihood for the archers to hit us in the face. Six trogs. Believe it or not, that will stomp our army. Forest trolls? That's pretty tough. We do a lot of damage, but so do they. Let's actually waste some time and go down this way, see if we can play it a little safer. I don't really trust these guys. Actually, over there would be good. Continue going this direction, even though that'll get us trapped between heavy calves and heavy calves. We might be able to take this out. Let's try out the heavy infantry and heavy calf. Now we've got our second army. Put the army in the top corner first. Hold the attack closest. Put ourselves in the front square. Put this gentleman on awakened tattoos. Put this gentleman on blessing. And we'll throw an awakened tattoo there at the end. And then just protect ourselves. Eh. We can now go out and handle these guys. So now we're getting two expansion parties, hopefully with success. And if not, we'll see what happens on the next one when we adjust our... All right, let's see. We got another point in alteration, which means if I'm not mistaken, our guys can protect themselves a little more from random arrow fire. Yep. So let's see how we did in Hysteria. Hysteria. Okay, this is the heavy cab. We put two guys on guard commander just to be safe. And then we set them to hold and attack cab. So hopefully they catch them and thump them. There we go. That morale route was what we needed. Now we can handle the rest, hopefully, with our berserk prot values. Yep. Teen. We don't have anybody with that army to... Ah, excellent. We didn't have... Oh, now he has full plate. Okay. Ooh, there we go. Okay, so let's take a look at the Awakened Tattoos buffs. Okay, so protection versus mundane attacks 22. That's the key. That's what makes these guys survivable. Protection versus mundane attacks 23, and now they're quickened, and if they berserk, their protection goes up even higher. So let's try to catch somebody when they're berserking. I don't even know if they're going to get damaged. There we go. He's got the prop. He's got the natural protection. So the good thing about this is this is only against mundane attacks. Remember, if we are being hit with magic weapons of any kind, this will kick in from the berserk. So it gets really nice because it adds just a little bit more just to be safe, which you can see reflected here. But for expansion, it's beautiful. Amazing. All right, let's see what we can do here. More heavy calves. Hold and attack enemy calf. Gonna take these guys out. Heavy infantry slingers versus 90 of these guys. Just because we like, we have less numbers, so we fight less numbers. Better be getting a druid here soon. Yep. All right, let's see how we did in our first battle. Oh, we're gonna be fine here. A lot of heavy infantries. We might get thumped a little bit, but... We do plenty of damage with quickness, and these guys got quite a bit of durability with that... Berserk protection. I think we just watched a guy that was already crippled get thumped but other than that yeah it's pretty quick mop up yeah we lost one that one guy we were watching ikton let's see what happens here okay here's the heavy cab here's the big if they catch the heavy cab we're good to go there we go the beauty of the quickness i caught him knock him out nice excellent work all right. Uh, one bear chested. Okay. Unexpected event. All right, cool. This guy's still pretty durable. He's doing all right. He's just going to keep expanding. Grab us some more provinces. These two are going to keep expanding. Which way? Oh, Jotun Axeman? No, thanks. We'll go that way. All right. Now our profits back here. Remember, these guys are not quick. We might actually want to put them closer to here. And then we'll put one of these gentlemen here. Normally, I like to put these guys in here to give us HP buffers, but they're pretty durable and I want them to meet the enemy at the exact same time. We're coming along pretty nicely on alteration. Pretty soon in a first war we would have a couple more buffs where we get down here you'll see we get stone skin aoe one that'll help us out a lot against magic weapons and curse of stones obviously pretty good but we're assuming for purposes of expansion obviously that we're not in a huge early war all right guys let's check out what happened here we need to watch the battle nope slaughtered them excellent work we battle slaughtered them now that we've got those buffs going copper woods slaughtered them we're good to go now we're rolling in children are disappearing at night that doesn't seem good that doesn't seem good at all what day turn is it nine so we've got three more more turns let's get ourselves up here traps us but we can go out that way let's go that way try to expand as efficiently as possible what's down here lava borns mm, maybe not so we're depending on such small numbers what's this guy he only has six left good lord i guess we'll start walking backward base this will walk us back and that would waste an expansion turn let's go this way i'd be building a castle up here anyway 12 9 they should be good to go maybe next turn we might be able to send them out now but i feel like we're going to start hitting some bigger provinces so it might be better for us to wait another turn all right guys here we are 
radar, checking out how our three combats went. Let's see, did we win? Yes, okay, this was our riskiest one, gentleman with the armor, and we lost two, so that's pretty much the time to call it quits with that army. Did well here, well here. Not as well as I had hoped here, but still well enough. Let's take a look at our guy up here. Oh yeah, he took a wound for it. Battle fright, that's the last thing you need. All right, buddy, back to base with you. Let's take these guys. Can't go through the heat down here. We gotta go up here, send these guys out somewhere. Where do we wanna go? Deer tribe? Sure, send them after some deer tribe. Now we'll take our other expansion army, double them up in size, send them out here. Make sure we're recruiting maximally. Looks like we're good to go. Turn 10, see what happens. All right, let's see how our combats went. Perfect, excellent, perfect, expected, nothing less. And oh, tax collection, okay. We're rolling in the dough here. I'm not really showing you guys how to build castles and stuff, but even with our crippled economy, we're rich. So now that we've got these guys here, let's send them down here. If we can take out this Jotun Axeman with our axes of our own. These guys are still doing solid. Not really a good province for them to go to, but knock out the heavy infantries. Take these guys. Heavy cav, light cav. Ooh, heavy cav, light cav. Forest trolls. Let's get them. Let's set this guy on some body ethereal just for fun. He's not doing anything anyway. And let's see how that goes for our expansion. All right, let's see how we did with our three battles and an unexpected event. More gold. Wow, bad luck. We're doing all right. Two nobles. Well, that's expected against forest trolls thumping us for 30 damage and a shaman light port. Three boar warriors. Oh, I have, oh, I have a feeling this went pretty poorly because of the magical water mage with all the gems and the giant axemen. Yeah, they got ahead before those guys. I gotta remember to script that differently. Lost a couple boar warriors there too. Did I script them both poorly? Yep. It's doable. Get ourselves out of here. Crushing enemy armies with reckless abandon. Oh, it's turn 12. All right, let's take a look how we did. Not great, but we are Marverni, so 122. All right, 22 provinces, some fairly tough ones, but the trick is just remember, set up your scripting properly. If you set up your scripting properly and do not set it up properly, you will mangle your expansion and you will get slaughtered. Otherwise, now we're in year one, the end of year one, so now our protection Tenor can start taking advantage because he's only a couple more turns away from Mother Oak. Now, what you wanted to do at the end of this is see these 20 popu 20,000 populations. You want to pump out a castle and a temple there. We have cheap temples. You want to be spreading those everywhere. We want to look for this, 6, 12,000. Pop another one there with a good income and start recruiting all of your Sakanis, your Gatwaters, and your Druids in those secondary castles. You're useless, Vergebret. I don't like you, even though you're probably pretty good. And what you're going to do is recruit only Elder Druids in your castle. It's the only place you can get them because of this darn site and you're going to recruit a lot less average troops. I like grabbing some of these guys just because they buff pretty well or these guys just because they never morale route. But once you've hit the end of your first year, now you're going to start looking into getting Mother Oak and going straight for getting these boars of Carnutes or you're going to keep pushing past five alteration and get six. Grab some of those iron pigs if you're in big trouble and you need something that's already buffed up. Or again, evocation level five if you want to grab yourself stellar cascades, gifts from heaven, something like that. Just be real cautious. And that's expansion for you. All right, guys, thank you for watching that EA Marverni guide. Please let me know in the comments if you guys prefer them in these two part series or if you prefer them in one crunched video that gets closer to 40 minutes. I can do it either way. It's a little easier when I split it too, but I'm happy to fill in that niche to get you a quick little one click and go. So let me know what you guys prefer. Otherwise, I'll see you guys on the next one. Let me know what nations you'd like to see next.